Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I hope you guys have had a great day. And I love seeing everybody say hey in the chat prior to me getting on. It's pretty cool. Um, I hope you guys had an awesome day. I hope you guys are looking forward to a an awesome weekend. And uh, we have some things to talk about. Yeah. Uh, touched up my hair today. I mixed by uh, so I get let me back up I get this question a lot what do I use to update my hair in between seeing my stylist and <laughs> um I use Caracolor it's called a conditioner it is a brand that I would love to work with I message them periodically I email them periodically and um I would I I love the product honestly it is a conditioner and in between um, seeing my stylist, and uh, it's just, it's easy the way that I use it. And this is not sponsored. This is me just sharing what I use to maintain this. So if it benefits you, that's awesome. I don't financially benefit off of it, but can you imagine if they sponsored a video in the future? That would be really cool. So this is a mix of hot pink and light pink and the the hot pink is very intense and so I put it on dry hair let it sit for 45 minutes and then I get in the shower and I wash it out and that's what we have here so it'll fade in a couple days but because I wash it so you know anyways I wash it often let me say it that way <laughs> Anyways, that has nothing to do with it, but I updated it. The lip that I'm wearing today, because I get this question a lot as well, so I figured I would just answer it, is uh, the NYX um, XXL Lip Lingerie Liquid Matte Lipstick. And you already know what I have over it. This is FaceTime by Queen Cosmetics. I do have an affiliate code for that. You can go to queencosmetics.store and use the affiliate code Aaron B's if you are interested. This color is called FaceTime. Okay, that being said, <laughs> if you happen to be brand new to my channel, my name is Aaron B's. I'm a wife, a mom, a military veteran, and I spent 13 and a half years in multi-level marketing, healed my way out, and now I'm using all of my social media platforms to educate and raise awareness around the dangers of multi-level marketing companies and the tactics used by their reps. Today's going to be messy. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Today is absolutely going to be messy. And I do want to give a content warning because I have watched, I have pre-watched this video, some with members um, the other day, yesterday, as a matter of fact. And I do want to give a content warning around consuming of alcohol. Um, I know that I, I give content warnings for when I'm opening up like my carbonated water that I drink. But this is somebody that, in my opinion, appears to be under the influence of alcohol. And I know not everybody is in a place that they want to consume content like that. So if that's too triggering for you, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up so that you can skip this live stream um, and do what's best for you because your mental health does absolutely matter to me. And the safety of live streaming and, and what we're creating here together is very important to me. So just know that that's what's happening. And for those of you that didn't watch or haven't had a chance to watch, let me say it that way. <laughs> I don't mean that to sound any kind of any kind of way. But for those that have not caught up on Wednesday's live stream, this is kind of a continuation, if you will, off of the Justin Prince terminated from Modair, if you have not heard already. And so I reacted on Wednesday to a video that Justin put out, and I reacted to one of his former leaders, Marina Simone, who also put a video out that was quite messy, probably should have gone to bed in my opinion, but I think it was a perfect example of what happens when top leaders leave multi-level marketing companies, whether they just decide to go to another company or they get terminated like Justin Prince did. And so I addressed that. But what I'm seeing and I find really fascinating is that a lot of these people that are in multi-level marketing that are not even in Modair are starting to act like they're speaking up. Like, what is wrong with our industry? First of all, a lot. In fact, everything, in my opinion. Um, and this is an example of that. So, yes, we're going to have some fun. 
Yes, there's going to be some craziness, of course, uh, but I also do want to make sure that we're focusing on what she is trying to do. And by she, I mean Melissa Collins, who posted this, I think, a day or two ago. And this is her answering, um, I can't remember what she titled it. Uh, I think it was something like, mentioned you, LOL, why MLMs suck. I think that's the title of it, something along those lines. And uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about that. We're, I'm going to react to her video and it is a wild ride. And again, content warning, it appears that she is under the influence of alcohol and going live and it is still up. I'm actually pretty surprised, Katie. I see your, your comment. And uh, I just want to make sure that you guys are prepared for this just in case you're not in a place that that feels safe to watch this type of content. So I am going to run the disclaimer. I appreciate you guys <laughs> reminding me. So hang on one second. Okay. And yes, uh, just Another reminder, it is very, very intense. I see what you said, uh, Mia, and it is very, very intense. So if at any point it gets to be too much for you, feel free to hop out. I totally get it. And uh, I'm pretty shocked that it's still up. I, yeah. In fact, she did another video. So I may end up reacting to that as well. We shall see. So yeah, ex exactly, Charlene. Exactly. Okay. Let's get to today's video. I hope you have a snack. I hope you have something to drink. And yeah, it's going to be wild, guys. So this is Melissa Collins. By the way, she is in Life Activated Brands, and that is a multi-level marketing company. Um, what I wanted to say, actually, before I start this video is, and I'm going to use some of the terms that Charlene just said a few minutes ago or a couple of seconds ago in the chat. She said some of these people that are in MLMs are having really big feelings and in my opinion, two things. Number one, what was Justin Prince fired for? What was he terminated for? Because a lot of these people are speaking up, but nobody has really addressed publicly. And I get why, because there's a lawsuit involved. But what was he terminated for? Because I feel like that's a key piece of information that people probably should know before they're standing up for somebody being terminated that's been a part of a company for a very long time. I think that might be kind of important. Um, also, too, these people that are posting publicly and defending Justin Prince and his character and all of that stuff, let's, let's not forget that these are top leaders, sometimes even CEOs. I've seen a couple CEOs of these MLM companies addressing it. Um, they're in a multi-level marketing company. They are part of the problem, in my opinion, because they are part of the C-suite or they're uh, a top leader in a company. They're in a multi-level marketing company talking about how unethical it is that Justin Prince's check was cut off, aka he was terminated. So let's just, I find that really fascinating. And I wanted to point those two things out before we we started this video. So yeah. Also, if you are in Life Activated Brands and have messaged me previously about Melissa Collins and some of the things that she does behind the scenes, allegedly. Uh, that seem to be unethical and self-serving, feel free to message me again, because this is going to be a wild ride, especially for you guys. Well, I'm live. Who knows what's going to happen? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Here we go. I'm drinking Party Punch. Sparkling Red Sangria. Sounds really good, though. Watch out now. <laughs> I'm going to give this a second and let some people come on live. If you're here on the replay and the little red live button is not there, then go ahead and tell me you hit this replay. I said this on the members only live yesterday, but it's 2023. Why are we pointing out to people on Facebook how to determine if somebody is live or not? I'm pretty sure after the countless reminders over the last however many years that 
people understand when somebody is live and when they have ended their live. I could be wrong, but. Um, because I'm going to give this a second. If you're here live, say hi to me. And uh, yeah, I have some shit to say. I have been a little bit fired up today about multiple things. Oh, I have so much to say and I'm trying to temper myself. I wonder if I can see comments. Hey, Brandy, how are you? I can see comments, so please comment so that I can see that you're here. Say hi to me. Uh, lives on Facebook are basically dead, so I don't even know why I'm doing a live. Exactly. Why are you doing this live? Unless you're using it. And this is what I think a lot of these people in multi-level marketing that are speaking up about Justin Prince being terminated and aren't addressing why he was terminated, which I have a couple theories and we'll talk about it at some point during this video. But I think they're using it as a recruiting tactic. I think they're using it as a way to increase engagement. So people go, what happened? Oh my God. And then it's a way to get in people's inbox to try and get them to watch the video or whatever tool they are, are referring potentials to. And I think it's just one big recruiting tactic. And I think that specifically it's, oh, that happened over there, but not in my company. That's what I think that they're doing, especially after watching this and seeing some of the posts that I have seen and some of the messages that you guys have sent. I really think it's just that happened over there. And if you're in that company, they can do it to you too, but that doesn't happen over here. And I think that is a major uh, undercurrent of what I'm seeing. Um, because Facebook has basically made them not worth it. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> you get hot, Melissa. You got hot mess, Melissa. Hot Great. mess, piss off, Melissa. Wonderful. I have, um, okay, so here's the, here's the scoop. Here's the tea. Justin Prince from Modere got uh, terminated. And it's got his check cut. And uh, my dog is barking. Where are you? I don't know where I didn't she hear is. a dog bark. But anyway, so that's what that's part of what spurred me today. But also the whole Real Housewives of MLM thing that I posted about earlier. Is this is why I named this video what I did. <laughs> Oh, because I, I, she posted about this and she rants about it throughout this video. And I find it really interesting that she's trying to point out how messy and inauthentic and untruthful a lot of these people are on MLM or it, in MLM and, and their lifestyles and things like that. And this person is in a multi-level marketing company that does, in my opinion, similar to the same things, the same kinds of tactics and stuff. <laughs> Got me fired up. Just so much. There's just so much. There's just so much that nobody says. And I'm like, I got to stand up. While you stand up, I'm going to remind, especially if somebody is in this company or in Modair that happens to be watching, because I have noticed that I'm getting a lot of people that are currently in Modair that are following me on social media. So if you guys are, are in Modair and you're watching this, I think that's awesome. Quietly watch it. It's all good. You can reach out if, if you're wanting to have a conversation. That's okay, too. Um, I just, this is all so wild to me. This is also wild how she is going to point out the messiness, but she's a part of the messiness, in my opinion. I'm like, why does nobody say this shit? That's what I was going to say. I kind of went off on a tangent a little bit. But what I was going to say was the anti-MLM movement says it all loudly on multiple platforms. So. It's interesting that she's like, why doesn't anybody say it? We have been. And when I say we, I mean, even before I was a part of the anti-MLM movement, it's been happening for years. There's been so many people speaking up and advocating against multi-level marketing companies. And it's like, we we have been saying it, Melissa. So that's weird. We talk about it. So here's the truth. You want to know what leaders do behind the scenes? We talk about this shit behind the scenes. But nobody talks about it publicly. 
Mm. I wonder why. Instead of say, oh, support everyone. Oh, love everyone. I do love everyone. And I do support people. Right. <laughs> but the reality is so much more than that. And here's the thing. Let's start with, okay. We're going to talk about cutting off checks and why that's not okay. But let's start with the real housewives of MLM. <laughs> let's start with that. Hi, Darren. Yes, please. Who are they? <laughs> We're talking about women who come into MLM and pretend that the lifestyle they lead is because they sell some shit. But the reality is the reason why they can stay home with their kids and the lifestyle that they lead is because I'm going to pause that real quick because the majority of people that I have seen, and again, this is my opinion, that are posting about having a specific lifestyle, traveling, buying certain things, financial freedom, things of that nature, the top percent of these multi-level marketing companies, the reason that they're able to, on paper, afford some of these things or say some of these things is because they have a team. It's not from the selling of their products. It's from recruiting. It's from having a team, period. So it's it's not, I mean, she's, she's there. I, I get where she's at, but it's not from selling a product. It's because those people have large teams. So let's see what else she has to say. Because their husband has some corporate job somewhere. It is the epitome of white privilege. And I'm going to okay. say it's white privilege. And you can okay. come and attack me for that all you want, but it is the most whitewashed industry out there. I mean, I, I, I do agree with that. I also think that um, by saying that, what she's addressing, not the white privilege part, but the part about uh, just basically not being truthful, that's deceptive marketing. So they're trying to recruit people into something and people don't have the information. And it's oddly similar, in my opinion, to how people are defending Justin Prince. But what was he terminated for? Was he terminated for uh, possibly, this is a theory I have, I'm not stating this as a fact, uh, starting his own thing and... Uh, you know, leaking information. I don't know if it's financial information from Z Capital. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, if if Modere, Modere is owned by Z Capital or they're the, I can't think of what the, that, that term is called, the financial backer, if you will, of Modere. And so my question is, I wonder if Justin being part of that kind of upper echelon of leadership, or at least he was, within Modere, having access to Z Capital, having access to the C-suite of the company, does he know specific financial information about Modere that he was qu he was quietly or privately sharing, saying, hey, the ship is going down? And again, this is a theory. I'm not stating this as a fact. It's a theory. And... Was he privately messaging people? Was he privately saying the ship's going down? I'm going to, I'm building another ship. You want to come with kind of thing? I don't know. But for him to be terminated, something had to have, have happened, right? There had to have been some reason. So I don't know. I find that interesting. Again, that is just a theory. I'm not stating that as a fact. But if there was some form of cross recruiting that was happening, that we see people get terminated for that all the time in multi-level marketing. It's like the real housewives of Houston and the real housewives of New York City. That's who they are. And they come in and they're like, oh, they don't like this culture. Right, because you want a culture where people will just love you for having a cute hat. Well, that's because people are people say maybe not about the cute hat part, but people talk about the culture. People in multi-level marketing talk about how loving and receptive and all of that stuff. And a lot of times people are brought into those companies. They're added to whatever group or whatnot, and they're announced that they're the new distributor, you know, and people love bomb them. And I, I, I want to try and get away from that term, but they, 
they will comment things and hype up the opportunity that this person has just joined in a way that is very intoxicating, in my opinion, to somebody that is brand new and nervous about it or second guessing it or whatever they're feeling at the time of them joining. And it's confusing. That's the way that I, I, I would like to present that. It's confusing. So people are brought in thinking community and then it's nothing but transactional relationships. So she's talking, she's pointing the finger like this, this is what happens in our industry, but it's like, she's a part of the MLM industry. And I guarantee you has participated in, in some sketchy things, in my opinion, like giving people volume and moving around uh, team members and stuff like that to benefit certain leaders. And in my opinion, of course, can't, I just can't. You want to know why I built, I spent my life blood building what I'm building and what we're launching next month because I want the masses. There's the plug. There's the, the, uh, the underlying recruiting seed that she just dropped because we're launching something new. Okay, Melissa. <laughs> the people, not the leaders. Look, a leader capable of coming in my company and making 50 grand in month one is capable of doing that anywhere. I want the people to rise up. I want the people Girl. to have the power. I want the people to be able to come and make what they wanna make. People come and join those leaders and those leaders make 50 grand because people wanna go make 100 or $500 a month. And those people actually need the $100 or $500 a month. Why are you yelling, Melissa? Maybe this should have been something that you put in a journal. Maybe you should have phoned a friend. But the fact that you are saying the quiet part out loud, that the majority of people, tr they, they join multi-level marketing in order to make a couple hundred dollars a month and we see that according to the FTC, the majority of people, 99.7% of people lose money or don't make any at all, according to the FTC. But you're talking about the leaders making $50,000 a month in these companies off of the people that want to make $100 to $500 a month, like she just said, that actually need the money. Meanwhile, the $50,000 income earner is, you know, posting all of the income claims and the lifestyle claims and all of that stuff, bringing more people in, not always, but under the guise that they're going to make money. But when you look at income disclosure statements, and Melissa, I'm going to challenge you right now in case you happen to see this or somebody sends this to you. Put your money where your mouth is. If people are making the money that you say later on in this video that they are in life activated brands, put an income disclosure statement out. Put your money where your mouth is. Show us on a chart. Don't be deceptive on the chart. Show us by rank. Show us how long they've been in the company. Show us the average and the median income. Show us all of that. If you're so different, then why does your company not have an income disclosure statement showing that? Because if it were me, and it's not, but if it were me and my company was so different and I was so proud of what I was building, the first thing that I would put together is an income disclosure statement and I would use that to recruit people. This is what you can make. This is what people are making. But no, they don't have one. In fact, they have a very sad... Um, two paragraph document that's really just, it's not a, an income disclosure. It's like an income disclaimer that talks about how the leadership is really important and, and developing skills. Melissa, you're not starting off this thing like you are so different. In fact, you sound like a watered down version of everybody else, in my opinion, when it comes to your multi-level marketing company. Just my opinion. Put your money where your mouth is. They don't need someone to make them feel like they hey, can Tish. make it. They need to actually fucking make it. <laughs> oh. And so that is why we are building what we are building. Right.
And so sometimes the things I say and the things I perseverate about online piss off the leaders. And I say leaders like this because you're not a leader. Then use that for you're yourself too. You're just a scumbag too. vampire <laughs> in the industry because, <laughs> because it shows their true colors. Mm. Look, here's the bottom line. It's black or white for me. For you. If you are with a company that is willing to cut off any 1099 distributor's check, you are the problem. It will not stop. This industry will not be fixed until everyone stands up and says, we will not tolerate this. If you do this as a company to one, you do it to all, and we will not do it. We will leave and go somewhere else. There are plenty of companies who have good products. There are plenty of companies who have good training. There are plenty of companies who have good leadership. You do not need to stay with a company who will harm others. And there it is. The entire purpose of this, in my opinion, from her, is to recruit people into life-activated brands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Here's the thing. If, if you're, let me, let me, let me think about how I want to say this. If you are part of the C-suite, the corporate staff of a multi-level marketing company, and you are making these claims that, hey, if somebody is, is getting their check cut off, and she uses that term, but he was terminated for something, and you don't necessarily cut off people's checks, but you do meddle in their downline and their organization, allegedly, and who is where and, and all of that stuff, this is all semantics. Because at the end of the day, if you're moving people around in the back office, again, allegedly, Melissa, uh, and that's going to impact people's paychecks. So you can sit up here and say, oh, well, this is wrong. He shouldn't have been terminated, which my question, and I feel like the comment that if you see something like this and you feel comfortable, I'm not saying go and troll people. I'm not saying that. But if you see these posts, I would love for for me personally i would love if if a comment was left that said what was justin prince terminated for because i don't feel like a lot of these people know and it's interesting that they're defending and i'm kind of going off on a tangent here let me get back to what i was saying my apologies uh even though this person allegedly is not cutting off people's checks by terminating them, it has been alleged to me that there is meddling of people's organizations and um, where people are within those organizations that impacts checks. So what I'm trying to say is this is just semantics in my opinion, as far as what she's saying, oh, we don't terminate people over here. Okay, but do you move people around in the back office that people aren't aware of? Do you do that? Do you exile people that don't do exactly what you're saying that you want them to do, whatever that may be? Because that might not be you cutting off their checks, but your actions and your behavior as somebody that is a part of the C-suite in the back office, that impacts people's paychecks. So again, in my opinion, this is just semantics. And then I get, oh, they're just protecting the field. They broke their contract. They did this, they did that. It what is did black do? and white simple to me. Y right, right. Justin Prince signed a contract. And I'm not saying terminating somebody is always the right answer. But if we're going to look at it the way that she's looking at it, very black and white, Justin Prince signed a contract. In that contract, it said, you can do this, you can do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, and whatever else it said on the contract. The contracts are extremely long, and they are not 
in my opinion, for the benefit of the distributor. It's for the benefit of the company. Many contracts are like that. So if that's the case, he signed the contract and said, I will abide by these terms. He didn't abide by the terms. He was therefore terminated. So if we're using her very black and white thinking, what was he terminated for? You provided volume and money sales to a company. You deserve to be paid for it. Period. End of story. There have been, I am convinced, I am convicted and convinced at this point that Lab is the only company that does not cut off checks. That's the third time that she has said something with that underlying, that doesn't happen here. That's the third time. Some sort of a recruiting planting or recruiting seed planting type thing. That's the third time in this video. And we're only six minutes and 55 seconds into her video. Three times already. We have been kicked in the face. People have spread rumors about me. People have attacked us. People have said horrible things about our CEO. People have cross recruited. People have gone into Messenger and said, Lab's a piece of shit and made up lies. But people have. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, are they lies or are they real experiences that people had working directly with you? Are they rumors or are they real experiences that people had in life activated brands? You can sit up here and say that it's rumors. You can sit up here and say that they're lies. There are very real experiences from people that were a part of your company that worked directly with you that have shared their experiences. Those are not lies. Those are not rumors. That's just you trying to control the narrative, in my opinion. Yikes. I made fake Google searches on Canva about... Uh... <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to keep playing. Hang on. I think I paused it too soon. About our sales and posted them publicly on Facebook, and we- Melissa, this is an, an unfortunate pause. They, you're, you, so you're saying that people made fake Google searches on Canva showing the sales of the company. Now let's, let's unpack that for a second. How is a Google search going to show the internal documents as far as the sales? How does that work? Because that's that's private information that had to have come from the company. How does that work? And also, how does somebody, I guess, how does somebody make a fake Google search on Canva showing the company's sales. How does that work? What? <laughs> Melissa, it's okay if you don't like the information people are sharing about your company. It's okay if you don't like the fact that Justin Prince was terminated. It's okay if you don't like the things that are uh, going on in the industry that you're a part of. But to say that it's rumors and lies is is interesting to say the least <laughs> and then to say people are making fake google searches on canva girl what are you okay <laughs> oh man and i'm seeing people are uh angel uh is posting some of the lawsuits the last lawsuit when i looked at this several days ago was the one that justin prince had uh against jesse lee ward <clears throat> That is from like 2018, I want to say, 2017, 2018, somewhere, somewhere in there. But uh, yeah, fake outrage for clout. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Also, can we can we see these alleged rumors and lies? Are they in the room with us right now? Or, okay, anyways. <laughs> Never cut off a check. We don't cut off checks. You know why? Because that scumbag who feels the need to do that, I don't know why they're doing it, but they produce sales in our company. And we said, if you produce sales, we'll pay you. And then we paid them.
So you don't think that if somebody breaks the terms of the contract that they signed, you think they should be able to get away with not being upheld to those terms? I I'm just trying to understand like where she's coming from because it's almost like it doesn't matter what he did. It doesn't matter what's going on. He brought in sales to the company. He should get paid on it. Well, but there's also this thing called the the terms, uh, the policies and procedures and those types of things. And so I, I, I just find this narrative very interesting that she's trying to paint. Because that's what integrity actually looks like. <laughs> I don't need to protect my field. My field are intelligent adults that can think for themselves. What? I don't need to protect them. They're grown. They're adults. It's a ridiculous. Do you talk to them like they're grown and adults privately, Melissa Collins? Do you treat people like they're adults privately? I'm just asking for my friends that are on here and also for the people watching the replay. I'm just curious. Argument to take someone's check. If you are a leader in a company. Here it is. That has a check that has has someone who has had a check cut off and you are standing behind that company. You are the problem. So now she's going to try and shame people into leaving Modere. <laughs> How's that working for you? <laughs> you're going to try to shame people. If you're part of this company and they're doing that, they did this to somebody and you're standing by, you are part of the problem. Hey, Melissa, you're also part of the problem because you're in multi-level marketing. Yeah, that's, that's how that works. You are the scumbag. You are the dumpster fire. And I'm saying it and I don't care because more leaders like me need to stand up and say that. Oh, the arrogance. Also, that was the fourth time that she's implied in some way, shape, or form that it's better over at Life Activated Brands, which I have heard it is not. <laughs> so that's interesting. Fourth time. Fourth time. Oh, you're a part of that trash company? Yeah, you should. You, you, you're a part of the problem. So let me shame you into joining Life Activated Brands. Are you kidding me? Are, are you kidding me? Oh, God. That's the fourth time. I promise you right now, the day that Brandon Hayes decides to cut off someone's check is the day I will burn his house to the ground. That's an interesting threat that you made about your CEO that you're in a relationship with. I'm not really sure. I think I think a lot of people are confused about that, but that's fine. Um, see, when I hear you say that, I think, well, that's... That's interesting because it's probably not Brandon that's allegedly moving people around within the company to benefit specific leaders or gifting a million in volume to certain people that come over. That's probably not Brandon that's doing that. That's probably you, in my opinion, allegedly, of course, that's doing that, right? So like this tough guy kind of, you know, I'll burn his house down. It's probably not Brandon doing that though, right? I'm not going to stay here through that. I'm not going to stand beside him and say that was okay. I'm not going to justify that. And until leaders start saying that out loud, publicly, and seriously, it's not going to stop. You say you want to change the industry, then change the industry. Stand up and grow a set. <laughs> I'm not going to call out names, but there are leaders at Modere who are posting right now their allegiance to that company. Yeah. And what they're doing, and I talked about this on the last live stream, she, she's telling the truth in this part. Uh, they are all using We Are Modare. John and Nadia Melton are one of them. I've seen a ton. If, if you just go to Facebook or Instagram and you type in hashtag We Are Modare, you will see exactly what she's talking about. This is giving what Monet did with the Mo Monet lifers and all of that, that whole scenario. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Same kind of thing here. Justin Prince was fired and now the loyalty is divided and people are like, uh, what do we do here? Do we stick with our upline? You know, I, we, we used to watch Justin Prince's videos and his training and we've met him at events and what do we do here? And then the other half is like, 
screw him. My loyalty lies with this company. They're not really saying that. Well, maybe they are. I don't know. You know, uh, I'm here. I'm a lifer. I'm going to stay here. And that's what hashtag we are Modare is. I also find it interesting that they had a company called the other day, um, right around the time that I think this video was posted from Justin Prince, which I find fascinating. A little damage control. It reminds me of when I was terminated from Modare. And actually, no, let me back up. It reminds me of when Jesse Lee was terminated from Modare. And they did a company call and they were using spiritual manipulation and talking about Moses and the burning bush and all of that stuff. If you were a part of that group that was terminated, you know what I'm talking about. But there was a whole company call and I think it was recorded, if I remember correctly, um, you know, using spiritual manipulation to keep people around the campfire, if you will, you know, wild. After cutting off their top leaders check, there are leaders at Isogenics who are standing up publicly and supporting the comp plan changes that they just did. And there are many other companies doing it. And if you can stand behind a company like that, then you don't deserve to have the respect of the industry. I'm sorry, I just, you know, we bring people into this industry with the promise of residual income. <laughs> Brandy. <laughs> If you're promising residual income, if you're promising income in general, Melissa, put the income disclosure statement out. Change it from an income disclaimer. Let's see the numbers. Or is that going to be is that going to be something that people created on Canva that's not truthful? Is that is that going to be your, you know, uh defense if that were to ever come out? Can you guys imagine? I I just I can't. With the promise of residual income. Residual income means I do work one time and I get paid for it forever. Which is it? Yeah, but that doesn't happen in multi-level marketing. You don't get residual income because if you're not balancing the spinning plates, if, if you don't keep those things going, it crashes. Residual income is if like you have a monetized YouTube channel you do the work to do the live stream or the ed the video and edit the video and you put the video out. And as people watch it, you get paid AdSense. That's residual income. I've done the work once for the video, for the live stream, for whatever. And you get paid down the road for it. Even if somebody watches it a year from now or two years from now or whatever, that's, that's residual income. That's actually passive income. So yeah, I, I just, I just... We have residual income or we don't. You can't have it both ways. And these also fields, this. these people like sheep that stand behind companies that do this. It's time to say something. It's time to stand up. There are more of the people than there are of the leaders. Wake up. Stand up, people. Yeah, there are more of the people that are losing money and or not making any money in multi-level marketing and you're asking them to stand up for what? To save the industry? Stand up. I wonder, Coconuts. I, I mean, just stand up. Here's the thing. Here's why people feel like they can't stand up. They have been conditioned to believe that they need the leader and they need the culture heavily on C-U-L-T, cult <laughs> sure, to produce the sales. We're changing that. Oh, we're changing that. Okay. Uh, Emian, member for 21 months. Incredible. Appreciate you so much. Almost two years. Let's go. Appreciate you. Oh, I didn't mean to click that, but hey, Shadow. <laughs> this is a warning. Warning. A warning. The network marketing industry. We are changing that, and the people are going to win. We are going to hand all of the power to the people. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're going to hand all the power to the people, and they will rise up. I promise you. I believe that with every... Maybe I'm wrong and I will fail epically, but if I'm not wrong, you are fucked. Because oh. <laughs> Sorry for anybody that doesn't have headphones on. She does start swearing from this point on. Uh, she's right there, guys. Like, she is right. She's right there. And then she switches to, we are going to change the industry.
Okay. All right, Melissa. <laughs> God. This is so bad. Mm. Danny, member for eight months. Appreciate you so much. She really said the quiet part out loud. Yikes. Yep. Yep. She she really did. Uh, and yes, I do think that she is under the influence of alcohol. Yes. In my opinion. We will hand all of the power to the people. And then they will go do what they want with it. What is happening? They don't need you. If you're watching this and you're a field member of some field somewhere. Fifth one. You're Actually, I think this might be the sixth one. Part of the people. You don't need that leader. You don't need them. We are in a different era. You have heard industry giants talk about how we are shifting, how the industry is shifting. But they, <laughs> they have no idea what to do. All they know what to do is to say the industry is shifting. Oh, lean into what's always worked. You know what happened when Target and Home Depot and Lowe's started building big lifestyle centers? I used to be in retail, in uh, commercial retail. Main Street started getting scared. They said, no one will go down there. They'll, this is the way we've always done it. What's the last time you drove to Main Street to buy your kids back to school stinkers? What in the fallacy is happening here? Are you trying to justify people buying your MLM product because people are shopping online now? Is that what you're trying to do? Because that's a weird comparison. Essentially, you're trying to compare people shopping at life-activated brands on your website, like shopping at Home Depot or Target. That's what you're going with, Melissa? Probably not your best idea, in my opinion. You don't do that anymore. You might not even drive to Target. You probably buy them online. Or you buy things through the app and then you just drive and pick it up. <laughs> just like, oh my God. The industry is, in fact, shifting. And people are no longer going to tolerate being treated like this. And the people are going to rise up. And the people are going to take over this industry. The industry is not dead in any way, shape, or form. This is a beautiful industry that provides the most, the most powerful form of entrepreneurship I have ever seen. I've been a business owner since I was 17 years old. I have owned, I don't know, I don't know now, 18, 19 businesses, most of them brick and the amount of self-soothing she's doing throughout this video is so distracting to me. I don't know if it's just me. It's, it's, to me, it's just distracting. I don't know. Um, hey, Shadow, a member for 13 months. I appreciate you so much. I love shopping downtown and real businesses. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mortar. And I'm just telling you that entrepreneur, the age of the entrepreneur is coming. And the people are going to rise up. And the leaders, the influencers, your time is up. That's why you see them hopping. You see them jumping, jump, jump, jump from opportunity to opportunity to opportunity. They can't figure out what to do. Or could it be the anti-MLM movement has gotten so loud that the very tactics people are using to try and sell an overpriced product that more than likely they can get elsewhere or a dupe for it, um, and the tactics that they use to try and recruit people are being exposed. And so people understand, scrolling through social media, what it is that people are trying to do when they're sharing their super vulnerable things, when they're making the health claims like the one I saw that I was sent from um, an Amari rep and I put it in my stories and tagged Amari and was like, yeah, y'all can't do this. And they were like, oh, thanks for bringing it to my attention. Yeah, you're welcome. I also notified the FTC and sent all of the information to the FTC as well, which we should all be doing. But I digress. It's, it's, I think the reason that she's saying the industry, the MLM industry is shifting is because 
they are scrambling to try and figure out how they can boost sales, how they can recruit more people, how they can keep more people for longer because people are seeing through the anti MLM movement. And I'm everybody, you know, everybody that's part of the movement, no matter what kind of content you put out, if they go to whatever platform they're on and they search for their company, they're probably going to come across anti MLM content. And so I think the shift that she's referring to is because they are having to come up with new terms. I think that's why they went from network marketing to social retail, social selling. Some of them are hiding behind affiliate marketing, which I addressed in my previous live stream. I think that's the shift that she's talking about. And it's a, in my opinion, a, like a fear mongering kind of tactic, trying to keep people in. And there's an underlying come to life activated brands in everything that she's doing here. It's not working for them anymore. And I'm just telling you right now that the power is in your hands now. We are creating a system, oh, God. a powerful system that we are going to hand to every single person who is. Is that on, on the app that you have that was created by whomever that uh, looks like the company profits, but allegedly it's actually Melissa that benefits from the financials of that app. Allegedly, I'm not stating that as a fact, but isn't that interesting? What I'm seeing is that a lot of these people in MLMs, let's take Doug and Tia Wood for an example. Doug and Tia Wood are going to be starting or opening a gym. Now, several people in Optavia are starting these side things, and I'm wondering if it's because of the shift that Melissa is talking about. Could it be that the sales and the volume and the paychecks, they're all decreasing? These companies are struggling now more than they ever have because of how loud the anti-MLM movement has become over the last several years. Could it be that their paychecks are are decreasing and they're like, oh my God, we have to do something. So we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Could it be? Could that be the shift that Melissa's referencing here? I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think. Willing to trust us. <laughs> and you can do what you want with it. And you can do whatever you want with it, by the way. You don't have to pledge your allegiance. You don't have to be okay with comp plan changes that screw over the leaders that built your company, Isogenics. <laughs> they really screwed over their leaders that built their company. You don't have to be okay with justifying cutting off people's checks. I don't know. I, it bothers me so much. I really think that we are, I am at the point now, I, first of all, about six months ago, I finally got to the point where I'm willing to say that we, we pay more than any other company in the industry. I, I'm fully confident saying that. I'm happy to send me your comp plan. I'm happy to go over. We don't need to see other comp plans, Melissa. We want to see your income disclosure statement. If you're going to make such a bold statement with your entire chest, back it up with the income disclosure statement. Otherwise, nobody has to believe you. What Are we supposed to take your word for it? If you're that different, Put it on an income disclosure statement. Let's see it. I'll cover it. I'll absolutely cover it. There's a reason that you guys don't have an income disclosure statement. And you and I both know what that reason is. For your comp plan and tell you how we paid probably double. We play almost double. At this point now with, with my last company, which was Isogenics, we pay almost 60% more than they pay for this exact same volume. Okay. Well... What I would love to see is where you lie with the percentages and the data from the Federal Trade Commission. Don't just compare yourself to Isogenics. Compare yourself to the industry. Let's see that income disclosure statement. Otherwise, I don't believe anything you're saying. You are underpaid. Sorry. Not sorry. Um, you wonder why they can do all those fancy trips and fancy things? Well... Let's think logically. Slow down and think. Yeah, let's think logically about putting the income disclosure statement together. Okay. Do you want a conference for those fireworks on stage? Or do you want more money in your paycheck? I think 
The reality is the reason they do those conferences with the big fireworks on stage and the trips to Fiji and all that bullshit is to keep people indoctrinated so they keep coming back. That's the reason that they do them. Is because it sells. But I believe that you are smart. And I believe that your family needs income. And I believe that at the end of the day, I, it might be the long plan. We might grow slower. But oh. I believe at the end of the day, you will figure it out. Yeah, yeah. So what she's trying to do, in my opinion here, is the people that are in lab that are not making any money. And she's making these promises like, oh, well... We may, we may, we pay out 60% more than isogenics. And there's probably people watching her that are, are part of lab that are like, 60% where? I'm not making that. And what she's trying to do, in my opinion, again, is to keep people there longer. Listen, if you're not making it you know, now, it could take three years. It could take five years. It could take 10 years. And she's trying to dangle that carrot of hope so people stick around a little bit longer. That's what I think is happening here. And I think maybe there's a part of her that kind of caught herself like, oh, I have people that are part of the company that probably aren't making any money here yet, according to her, probably. And yeah, she's trying to save face here a little bit, I feel like. And you will realize that money in your pocket is more powerful than fireworks on a stage for some overinflated ego that you don't even care about. Speaking of overinflated ego, my husband and I joke about this story often. <laughs> we went to a Prove It event one time and we were watching Brian Underwood do a choreographed dance with dancers behind him and like pyrotechnics on the stage. And it was so cringy and it was so weird. And I remember looking at him and I remember him looking at me like, what is happening here? It was probably... It was probably one of the cringiest things that I've seen at at these events. <laughs> There's just Check not it. enough time on a live to talk about all the things. There's just not enough time. So I'm going to sick my sangria. And I'm going to calm down. Are you okay? What really got me fired up this week was the oh. thing I've been talking about, the real housewives of MLM. Mm. 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 You know what's interesting is I think she's the real housewife of MLM. And that's not a compliment, by the way. Again, that's just my opinion. They bother me, these bitches, these momsters. I call them momsters. Momsters? Oh, look at my lifestyle. Look at my office today. Shaming all the moms who have to go to work because they need to feed their children. Are those parents in your company making money to feed their, their children, Melissa? Because if that were true, again, I'm going to say it again. If that were true you would have an income disclosure statement showing that and would be recruiting off of that, in my opinion. So, weird. Pretending like MLM got them there while their husband, by the way, goes to work 60 hours a week and pays for everything. And they haven't rank advanced in six months. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Let's not pretend that's not the actual reality. Oh, the diversionary tactics Here's here. The deal. And then we have the whole, oh gosh, Melissa, don't, just don't say things you shouldn't say. Oh, say it, Melissa. We're already here. <laughs> we have all these other new things coming in. These not MLM things that we can sell and resell stuff. <laughs> Master resale rights? Okay. Hmm. I wonder if that's a jab at a certain person that used to be in her company, a.k.a. Megan Desart that uh, now is selling master resale rights. It makes me wonder if something has gone on between the two of them. I don't know. But that's interesting. At the end of the day, entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship. Business ownership is business ownership. And there are... <laughs> it reminds me of Ben from Live Good. 
Network marketing is network marketing. In fact, let me play that because I haven't played that in forever. Here it is. Network marketing is network marketing. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate that. <laughs> Specific skills that are required to build any business. Period. Any business. MLM, brick and mortar, whatever. Problem with MLM is, is that most of them are not teaching those skills to people. No, the problem with MLM is the fact that the majority of people that are actually making money are because they have a large team and they're recruiting people that are not making any money. That's the problem with MLM. One of the many. I talked about this in a live in a private group today. I got to tell this story. So in case you happen to be brand new to my channel, I did a, a live stream on Live Good. It's a multi-level marketing company. And the CEO, his name is Ben. And he was doing this training that he posted publicly. And in it, he was talking about, well, network marketing is network marketing. And basically saying, you know, yes, I'm aware of the statistic that the majority of people are not going to lose any or not make any money. They're going to lose money. And, but, you know, network marketing is network marketing. And that was essentially what he was doing in the video. And I clipped that sound because I was like, oh, my God, this is perfect. <laughs> so there's a story behind that. Um, with some people who are looking for actual mentorship. The reality is most MLM leaders are just teaching people what to do to go enrich themselves. They're not teaching them the skills for long term entrepreneurship. And the reason why is because it's is because they're not actually entrepreneurs. They're not business owners. They are cosplaying as business owners, in my opinion. They're 1099 contracted workers. They are people that have signed up with these companies and they're part of their unpaid advertising team. They're putting all the posts up on social media. They're going live. They're talking about the products. In the event that they sell something, they make a little tiny bit of commission. The real money is in recruiting. They don't get paid for any of that. Self-serving. The reason why is because it, if, I, if I teach you to go, go for the, I can motivate you. Look, I can sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. Come sit with me. I can sell you anything I want. Except the Brooklyn Bridge, ma'am, is not for sale. So how does that work? You get to steal the Brooklyn Bridge to try and sell it to whomever. I know this is a hypothetical example, but come on. I want to sell you. I'm good at it. I was born this way. Oh, and some people clearly. I can, I can get you, I can motivate you, and I can get you to go reach out with some scummy message to 200 people and 20. I can get you? That's really slimy. Ew. 20 of them will agree to it. Oh my God. 20 of them will do it because those are the numbers. But it's going to only harm right. you and your reputation, and it's going to enrich me. Because I could just keep doing that over and over and over again. The problem is, here's the problem for these leaders, the masses, we've figured it out. And we don't want to do it anymore. Because people probably are not buying in on those tactics. So that's why the industry is shifting, is because people are like, no, I don't want you to tag me in a video. No, I, I don't, I don't want to be in a three-way conversation. No, I don't want you to have my information in your app so that you can follow up with me. No, no, thank you. What is the name of the company? I'll research it myself. And that just takes the power away from the distributors in the company. And so you want to know why the industry is changing? That's Tell us, why. Melissa. People are sick of it. They want to learn real skills. They want to learn how to actually learn how to build online. People want to And there are so many ways that you can learn that. No matter what platform, if you want to learn how to build Instagram, if you want to build uh, TikTok, if you want to learn how to do a YouTube channel, there are so many ways that you can learn how to do that for free that don't require people to join a multi-level marketing company or buy ridiculous courses from master resale rights. Ridiculous. Don't do it. To learn how to actually go viral and build a network. People want to know what to do when they wake up in the morning. They don't want a bunch of frou-frou nonsense like a rah-rah shish kumba cheerleader bullshit.
I mean, I get where she's coming from, but if they're true business owners, they don't have to wait for somebody to tell them what needs to be done. This goes against everything that a lot of these people in multi-level marketing say in order to try and recruit people. Be your own boss, fire your boss, time freedom, financial freedom. None of those things happen. And so then you get this shift of, hey, people want to know, or from what she was saying, people want to know what they have to do every single morning. But I thought they were their own business owners. Oh, they're not. Okay. So you have to tell your employees that you're making large commissions off of their sales, if they have any, or off of the purchase of their kit. You have to tell them what to do so that you can better your check. Got it. They want to know what to actually do. So here's, here's my message. Thanks, Jane. First of all, here, I have a couple of messages. First of all, a couple, number one, <laughs> if you are with a company that has cut off someone's check, you should leave. Maybe you don't want to come to lab. I don't right. care where you go, go somewhere else. I have lost count. I think seven, eight times the underlying recruiting come to lab message has come across on this video, absolutely absurd. You should leave. We need to stand up and say, this is not okay. Number two, if you have an interest and a desire in learning how to build an online business, find a leader who will actually teach you that. Or you could do a bunch of Google searches, look on YouTube, you could join something called Skillshare. I think it's like $15 a month. And you can take actual classes from people that walk you through uh, online how to do specific things. Or if somebody you know is you're connected with them online and they have uh, you know some sort of a business, maybe you could ask them questions too and they can point you in the direction where you can learn more. You don't have to join an MLM in order to learn how to how to build an online business. Building is, in my opinion, a term used for recruiting without saying it's recruiting. Not teach you how to go message 100 people. Thanks, Amian. I appreciate you. Not teach you how to overcome objections and all that. Look, some of that is part of business. But for the most part, that time is gone. We are past that. If you are in a company that says they have a system and they're teaching you ATM, peak pass plug, that's not a system. <laughs> Paging John and Nadia Melton. Paging John and Nadia Melton. <laughs> system. That is called an order of operation. What to do in which order? The order of operations is from algebra in high school. <laughs> Remember when you did like, uh, it's foil first outside inside last. Isn't that order of operations? No, that's something else. Order of operations is you guys remember what I'm talking about, right? Whether you do multiplication, division, those types of things first. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, it's an actual system. So we might grow slower at lab. We might be steady and slow, but I can tell you this. Financially, sales-wise, we are up over last month. PEMDAS? Is that what y'all learned? Please excuse my my dear Aunt Sally. Yes. Okay. I don't know what this PEMDAS is, but it was a. It, I was in high school a long time ago. So <laughs> fill me in, peeps. And I can promise you this. You can believe me or not believe me. You can listen. Is it parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, adding, addition, excuse me, subtraction? Is that what that's for? Yeah. Okay. I hated math. <laughs> Listen to your leader's MLM math bullshit or not. Oh, good. I got it. Vast majority of companies in the industry, almost everyone is down over last month. We are up. You are either growing or you're dying. Show us the numbers, Melissa. Just show us the numbers. These are bold claims. The industry numbers are down, but yours are up. Let's see it. Or or is that going to be something that you say people created in Canva and it's a lie? <laughs> and there is a reason for that. 
It's time to start paying attention. We are coming into a time of very dark winter. We are coming into a time of deep depression and recession. And it- In the MLM industry, or are you talking about people's finances as a whole? I would definitely love some clarification on that. It is time to figure out what to do. So we might grow slower. We might not be in this massive explosion, but we are growing. And we are growing because we teach people actually how to build a business. With your app? With your app, with all of the generic multi-level marketing training that we've seen from literally every other company. Is that what you're talking about, Melissa? Melissa? Because I know Katie's a huge fan of that app. (laughs) Feel free to go up in the comments, Katie, because I know you're laughing right now. We teach people actually how to figure out who they are and what their authentic voice sounds like. And then we teach them how to use (laughs) that to build a brand online. Oh, my God. That is very different than the back. Yeah, it's very different, except I've heard that from every other MLM company and every other MLM leader <laughs> before. <laughs> vast majority of this industry. Anyway, I don't know. I don't think I have anything else to say. I, you sure? I should turn this live off before I take one more sip of the sangria because I'm just going to say things that I shouldn't say. I can tell you this. For those of you considering buying one of those things that you can resell oh mrr okay yeah tell us the titans of the industry the people who you don't know their names the titans they're going to give it away for free soon so if you're considering spending four people can can do it for free or for very inexpensive private private license rights has been a thing for a long time you could go and in Google search PLR for, and let's say that you wanted to make a planner or a menu or uh, whatever, whatever, a, a, a guide on how to learn to crochet or to knit or those types of things. You can search that and you can find it for very inexpensive. You buy the rights that's not four ninety seven from MRR. And, and you have this guide and you can do the very same thing for very, very inexpensive. I'm talking like maybe 10, 15 bucks, maybe somewhere in there. It's not that expensive. So they, these people can give it away for free or whatever, but MRR is just another in my opinion, pyramid scheme. It's based off of recruiting. They talk about a hundred percent commission or whatever, but that doesn't happen unless somebody joins to be able to sell the product. And the product is courses, even though we've heard people go, oh, it's not courses. It's a... Yes, it is. And it's the same courses. You change some of the fluffery of it and and then try to resell it. Like, come on. $444 or $777 or 2222 on a course that you can resell, you might want to reconsider it because it's about to be free. 100% of them. Sounds like you're mad at Megan Desart. What happened, Melissa? Are you okay? Something happened between you and Megan to start? Hmm. It's a shame. Uh, although I will say, when I heard and reacted to Megan going over to Life Activated Brands, I, I would like to say that I called, that it would only be a matter of time between before, excuse me, these two started to butt heads. I would like to say I called that. So that's if that's the case... Hmm. There is a very small number of people who actually run this industry and you will never know their names. And those people are solving that problem. Okay. All right. That's all I have to say. I love you so much more than you could ever know. And right. I appreciate you. And I'm going to talk to share this, by the way. People oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Share this because the underlying theme of this entire video is to recruit people into the lab or into into the lab, into lab, life activated brands. So make sure you share it out so that people join me. Girl. Share this video. I love you. Bye. 
Uh, except you don't. Except you don't love people. You like transactional relationships. You're in an MLM. In my opinion, that's that's how that works. You had a stopwatch going. Oh, that's funny. Oh yeah, I did stop getting recruitment texts from her. Oh, isn't that interesting? You should go back, Katie, and look at at uh, the time frame that you stopped getting those recruitment texts to join Life Activated Brands by Megan Desard, and you should see uh, when that was, and then like match it up to when she started talking about MRR on her Facebook and social media. That would be interesting. Oh, that was a lot, guys. You guys, you guys, okay? I hope I gave appropriate content warnings for this because I know that can be pretty triggering for people. Katie said, give me a second. <laughs> oh man, that was rough. Yeah, this right here, you love what they can do for you, Melissa. Yeah. You don't love people. You love anything with a pulse that you can recruit into your business. And I'm going to add on that and say that... She loves people that she can recruit, in my opinion, that will also continue to do what she wants them to do. And the second that you question it or decide to do something different, you get exiled. Allegedly, of course. <clears throat> yeah, that was rough and not in a good way, Brandy. <laughs> oh, you guys are amazing. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for being here. I know Katie is looking, so let's hang tight for just a second. If you have not already, it'd be really cool if you could like the stream. If you're not already subscribed, consider clicking the subscribe button. And uh, yeah, hold on, Katie just... <laughs> Katie, you work so quickly. It's amazing. The last message from Megan was 929 ever since it's been just generic product text from Lab, not from Megan. That's interesting. So I wonder when she stopped talking about lab and started talking about MRR. I bet it's around that time frame. I bet it is. <laughs> this made me giggle. <laughs> uh, also, who hasn't licked the stream? It tastes like canned sangria. I could go for some sangria though. That sounds really good. Oh my God. Yes. That is so exciting. Um, unrelated, but placing my first queen cosmetics order because glazed donut. Um, yes. Yeah. Apparently queen cosmetics just put out some lip plumping products as well. I have not tried those. I'm not really into like lip plumping stuff because I, I, I'm good. Um, but I'm, I'm, you guys let me know what you think. Have you seen the black widow which is a black lip gloss, like these that I have from Queen Cosmetics. I do have an affiliate link, so I mentioned that at the beginning of this. Um, I don't know if I can do like a black lip. I want to, but I don't know. Y'all let me know what you think, how you guys feel about it. Uh, let's see. 918, she launched MMR. MRR, excuse me, master resale rights. So 918 and then Katie started getting uh, generic text messages from life activated brands versus Megan. So that's kind of interesting. An 11 day difference. Oh, donuts. Yes. Donuts for everybody. Yeah. But I, but I, I thought lab was different. I thought you could do multiple things. Oh, but see, you can't do multiple things because Melissa doesn't want you to do multiple things in my opinion, you know? Oh, you guys think I can? Okay, I'm going to order it after this. I'm going to try it. I'll wear it on my next live stream. I'll do, I'll, I don't know, I'll have some fun with makeup. Um, also, I need to plan my live stream with my Halloween costume. I'm not going to tell you guys what it is, but I'm very excited about it. All right, I'm going to order it, you guys. And I'm going to try it because I've been looking at it and it's, it, it, is one of their most popular colors of their lip gloss, Queen Cosmetics. I mean, it's it sells out so quickly. So I need to actually see if I can get it. But I will try it. I will try it. Yeah. Every time I get here, you're finishing. I'm so sorry, Patricia. Uh, I have been all over the place with the timing of lives and stuff. It's just because I have stuff going on in the afternoons. 
Um, but since my husband and I have been homesick together, uh, I've had a little bit of, of leeway as far as times and such. 10-6, she said goodbye to MLM. Well, that's interesting. I wonder when Life Activated Brands pays out. Hmm. Interesting. Lushy she says, have fun with your inbox this weekend. <laughs> I will. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, notoriously morbid. I. This is the second time I have heard about this brand. Has great vampy lip stuff. I saw a video on TikTok and they were, it was this really beautiful woman and she was looking for a gray um, matte lipstick and she, she showed the packaging and the artwork that goes into this brand. And I'm going to have to check that one out. All right. I'm going to go figure out what to make for dinner. I appreciate all the feedback. I appreciate all the comments. Um, everybody that's liked and subscribed to my channel, I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for being here. Guys, don't join an MLM. And uh, shout out to the replay crew. Shout out to the members. And shout out also to the moderators. You guys are incredible. Thank you for being here. Don't join an MLM and I'll see you on the next live stream with a black lip. Hopefully, actually, I don't know if it'll be here in time, but you'll see a black lip soon. Okay. Bye everybody.